These people who are so driven to divest themselves of guilt, to release and free themselves from any assessment that they are sinning, are promoting and selling their perversion as if it's normal on every level in this nation, starting with elementary schools, TV sitcoms, films, and every other form of media. The government has stepped up to help fund their efforts and accommodated them in all kinds of ways with non-discriminatory laws. Politicians seek the homosexual vote by campaigning for homosexual rights. They want us to accept the notion that homosexual behavior is really something that is natural for a legitimate minority, that it's the same as being African-American or it's the same as being Hispanic. These people are a minority who, uh, who have been unjustly discriminated against and now are entitled to special treatment under the law to make up for this long, harsh discrimination. The uh, best statistics that I could find indicate that somewhere between one and two percent of the population in our country would classify themselves as engaging in homosexual sex acts. But this very small portion of our population is commanding the attention of the ninety-eight to ninety-nine percent of the rest of us. They're endeavoring to make us accept the fact that this is some kind of normal behavior. Not only that, they deserve special treatment because they've been so abused in the past. Their agenda is simple. They just want to desensitize us to the sinful character of this. They, they want to desensitize us. They don't need us to become advocates. They just need us not to care, to roll over, if you will, to acknowledge them as just another minority who should enjoy same human rights that others enjoy. But this is not a race of people. This is a sexual behavior, nothing more, nothing less. It is ridiculous to assume that because they do a specific sexual act or acts, they therefore demand certain rights and should be granted those rights. I don't know how you can separate it from giving the same rights to people who do other deviant acts like pedophiles, murderers, rapists, drug dealers. They all have a different orientation. Should they have rights? Wife beaters? Child molesters? Where do we end this? All sin comes because people are bent toward it. And when a society decides that certain sins and certain sinners should have special rights, they have moved long and far from a true understanding of sin and Scripture. Are we going to give the same rights to rapists? Well, this is just the way they're bent. They're drawn that way. They have strong impulses that way. Um, they should be able to express themselves in any way that they like, and we should give them rights because they're bent that direction. People who are rapists, I understand, are compelled, driven. So are those who are the child molesters, pedophiles. Their preference has become the cause of the most devastating public health epidemic in this nation's history. They launched the AIDS epidemic. Their preference, if it continues along with the other sexual deviations in our culture, will cause the most devastating corruption that any nation has known since the plagues of the Middle Ages. Say nothing of the financial eruption in the medical health community trying to take care of all these people. 
They are very aggressive in recruiting children as young as they can get to them in elementary school to draw them into the pit of their perversion and make themselves feel normal. They have now been given the right to adopt children so that they can have their own casualties right under their own noses in their own houses. This would be like taking two mass murderers and telling them they can adopt children and expecting that a normal child would be produced in that kind of environment. Their behavior is nothing more than the expression of a sexual lust that is unnatural, twisted, and uncontained. And no matter how you try to glamorize it and make it look normal and make it look nice and all of that, let me give you some statistics. Eighty percent of people engaged in homosexual acts say half their partners are total strangers. One out of two. How many partners do they have? The latest statistics that I can find indicate that the average homosexual has had more than 500 sexual partners, 500. By their own admission, 50 percent of them total strangers. 30 percent have had a thousand partners, some as many as 1,600. The latest I could find out on the average, the average has 300 a year, almost one different person a day. The conduct of their acts has no bounds. It all was launched in what were called gay bathhouses where they used to have anonymous contact with ten to thirty unknowns in one day. Similar kind of behavior has now found its way into other places. Every conceivable and inconceivable act is included, none of which we need to talk about. They are one to two percent of the population but fifty percent of the people with AIDS. One in twenty of these people is a child molester. Of the normal population, it's about one in five hundred at, mo- at the least. They are one thousand times more likely to get AIDS, one hundred times more likely to be murdered. Eighty percent of them have sexually transmitted diseases. The average death of our population is now 75. The average American dies at 75. The average person engaged in homosexual life dies at 39. Two percent live to 65. Just to take the glamour off it, that's what it really is. It is a sexual lust gone mad. It is suicidal. And I could give an almost endless parade of statistics and a litany of information on the problem which doesn't, after a certain point, help. What is more important is to understand it from God's viewpoint for what it really is. So let's go back to our text in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. There is a mention there in verse 9 of the word effeminate effeminate. Marginal note in the NAS says effeminate by perversion. Malakos is the Greek word. Uh, It seems to have been a technical term for the passive partner in homosexual relationships. 